Oh mine, that was a cooking marathon last week. In the past five days, I have actually cooked nine out of the 11 dishes that I'm gonna show you in today's video. In today's video, we will be focusing on traditional German dishes that are called the Eintöpfe. And those are fake soups, usually one pot dishes that are considered a main meal. So you can suspect that those are healthy, easy to make and nourishing as well. So if you are looking for some inspiration on what to cook in colder months, please keep on watching. And as always in the description box down below, I'm going to put the German names and the English translations of all the dishes that I mentioned. We're going to start this video with Pichesteiner, which is Bavarian beef stew that contains several kinds of meats as well as soup vegetables. This recipe was developed in Kirchberg im Wald in the 19th century, so this is a very old dish. The version I made contained fried onions and also three different kinds of meats. On the screen right now you can see the meat that we use for beef goulash. This meat has to be cooked in the pot first because it takes the longest to get tender. Then I added some pork and veal cubes, as well as soup vegetables and potatoes. And although this one pot dish is so popular, I have made it actually for the first time, but surely not last. And because it's really one pot dish, you can cook it while doing different things. I suggest you work with timer so you don't forget to add the ingredients. When talking about popular German soups, I really need to mention the lentil soup. Here in Germany it's usually served with meat and potatoes, as well as soup vegetables. And because we are in Frankfurt, we are having the soup with Frankfurt sausage and a bit of bacon. We season our lentil soup with white wine vinegar, salt, pepper and sugar, but you can also add some nutmeg or caraway seeds, depending on what you like. Swabian beef stew, so called Geisburger Marsch, is the third Eintopf on my list. Its main ingredients is beef meat that is cooked and then chopped into smaller pieces, as well as soup vegetables. Those two in one pot make a wonderful dark broth and then you need to add to it separately cooked spätzle, as well as hard boiled potato cubes and the meat that you have cut it into smaller pieces. On the top of that you also add a fried onion on butter and that really completes the dish perfectly. And by the way, Geisburg is a district that is located in Stuttgart-Ost. There are a few stories that explain the name of this dish. One of it says that the soup was very popular in the 19th century among officer candidates that marched all the way to Geisburg where their favorite dish was served. And the other one says that the men from Geisburg became uh, prisoners of war and their wives developed this nourishing dish because they could bring them only one meal every day. So they march with it to the camp. When talking about the German soups, I also need to mention Kartoffelsuppe, so the potato soup. Potato soup is considered traditional German and Austrian dish and there are different recipes in different regions. The soup contains lots of vegetables, onions, carrots, leek and potatoes. I seasoned my soup only with salt, pepper and nutmeg. And because we live in Frankfurt, I have also added Frankfurt sausage. We prepare Frankfurt sausage always by warming it up, not really cooking, because the sausage would lose its beautiful taste. And then we slice it into smaller pieces and add it to the soup. My potato soup also has a bit of cream and that makes it even richer in taste. But in other regions in Germany, it might be served differently. Some add to it a uh, Bockwurst, a uh, Vienna sausage, meat dumplings, blood sausage or liver sausage. In the north also plums. In the west, for example Pfalz, they serve it with a yeast dumplings on the side. 
in Baden with a plum cake on the side and in some parts of Swabia also with a fried butter upper rings on the side. So this can get pretty crazy. We are pretty happy to have it with a hard boiled sausage and we don't need a dessert with it. And while talking about the German Eintop variations, I cannot forget the Bohn Eintop, which is the German stew that is made with beef and green beans. It does also have soup vegetables like leek, celery, carrots. And this one is one of the easiest soups to make. If you don't care if the green beans are overcooked, you can just put all the ingredients in one pot and simmer it until the beef is tender. And we are not done with all the greens yet, because another dish that I have to mention is called Epsen Eintopf. And this translates to pea stew that is made usually from green peas. Soup vegetables like leeks, onions, celery, carrots, as well as potatoes. Non-vegetarians would also add some bacon to it, what obviously makes it taste even richer. And at the end, when all ingredients were tender, I ended up mushing this a bit to achieve this wonderful and creamy consistency. The soup was healthy, filly, and it definitely helped with digestion. And now we're gonna move on to some sour stuff. So this is soyanka. Soyanka is the soup that comes from former East Germany and it has Russian origins. I am telling you, the soup has got so much going on. It contains onions, peppers, pickles as well as water from the pickles, can of tomatoes, tomato puree and the broth. It can contain different kinds of meat, usually is jagdwurst and gammon. The soup is seasoned with garlic, paprika powder, mustard, salt, sugar and sour cream. If you like sour dishes, that's gonna be the one you should try. Kohl Suppe, so the cabbage soup is also another staple uh, from the German cuisine. This one can be made with a different kind of cabbages. I use the regular cabbage. I have also added celery, leek, onion, spring onion and carrot, as well as some vegetable broth and oil, pepper, salt, parsley and lemon. I made this soup vegetarian because we had so many beef soups already in this week. And I need to tell you that that one was very refreshing and obviously extremely healthy. To make it richer, you can also add some potatoes to it. And you can spice it with cumin, majoran or thyme. But also fresh herbs like parsley. In other parts of Europe, the cabbage soup is also made with a sauerkraut. Here in Germany, we rather use fresh cabbage, but I am sure that some families also make sauerkraut soup. Hühnersuppe, so the chicken soup, is very popular, especially in the winter season, because this is what the Germans eat when they catch a cold or flu. Every German chicken soup contains chicken or chicken parts, soup vegetables like celery, carrots, leek, parsley and some onions, Usually I don't remove the skin from the onions because this way the broth is gonna have a nicer color. The broth I prepared was spiced with salt, pepper and bay leaf. And as soon as the chicken was done, I took it apart, chopped a few carrots and then both chicken breasts into smaller pieces that I then used for the soup inlay. If you like, you could add different kinds of vegetables. It is also very common to add green peas, but I think that this is not necessary. And the last soup that I would like to mention is called Steckrüben Eintopf. And that soup I have actually made for the first time. Steckrübe can be translated to rutabaga, turnip or sweet. And it looks exactly like this. To make the soup, I have followed North German recipe that also contained potatoes and onions, as well as parsley, sugar, cumin, salt and pepper. And also pork belly, but I know that in other recipes there are also other meats that people use. The soup after being cooked can also be spiced with nutmeg and parsley. Next time when I will be cooking this vegetable, I will cook it with a mashed potatoes, as some of you suggested. I am sure that that's going to be delicious. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope that you did enjoy it. Please let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite one pot dish that you are happy to cook every winter. 
Tomorrow it's Wednesday 11 11 and here in Germany the carnival time starts and because this year carnival is gonna be a bit different uh, comparing to the past years so we have decided to celebrate it with food and as you might guess the next week's video is gonna be about the most popular German carnival food which is German donuts. I hope that you're gonna stay tuned for that. I wish you a lovely week and I see you on my next one. Bye!